You just got wrecked. What's going on, guys? It's K Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Thursday. Hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are. I know, I know, if you woke up this morning and you had a look at your portfolio, well, it's probably not looking too great. Now, yesterday we did say that there was a chance of a pullback. I said we have to be realistic about this. You know, I love being full on bull, trust me. Like, I want to go to the moon too. But we were kind of getting into a territory where it looked like Bitcoin was kind of not really looking like it was going to go up any further. And and as we know, when Bitcoin gets hit, you see Bitcoin's down 4.2%. The altcoins tend to get hit sometimes two, even three times as hard, okay? So this is what's happening. Should you be worried, though, let's talk about it. Let's dive in. I want to talk about the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency short term, but I also want to talk about the potential long term as well, because we've had so many predictions, right? You hear quarter quarter of a million dollar Bitcoin, million dollar Bitcoin by 2022, right? So we're going to dive in. We're going to look at it realistically based on previous performance. And also, I wanna talk about a scam that's going around right now. In fact, it's one that's affected me personally because it's actually been playing on ads in front of my videos. You may have even already seen it. So we need to talk about this, and I think it's a good opportunity to expose this scam, and also if there's anybody new out there, maybe help you to understand the types of things that you need to stay away from in the space, okay? And hopefully you'll find some value out of that. Also, that being said, if this is your first time checking out the Crypto Zone YouTube channel and you haven't gotten subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? I do this literally every single day. You guys rock. Now let's dive in. Let's have a look at these markets. Let's give it a quick refresh live. So yeah, we've lost a, uh, well, how much have we lost? A little bit, around 17 or 15 15, 16 uh, billion dollars. I don't know. It's kind of fluctuated since this morning, but as you can see right here, a lot of red, lots of red down here. Now, if we switch it to the Bitcoin comparative, you can kind of see, uh, you know, there's a few, few uh, coins in here occasionally doing well. Crypto.com, <laughs> that's a stable coin. <laughs> that's a stable coin. Zilliqa, okay. Pack, oh, that's a stable coin. So yeah, not, not too many altcoins doing well today. Actually, if we look at the biggest gainers of the day, we do have Matic up 22%. Now, Matic actually has some pretty cool news that came out. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. We have ABBC coin again, Huobi token, next crypto chain made safe. But yeah, for the most part, it's just stable coins and lots of red across the board. Actually, earlier today, Matic Network was up to almost 32% or 32%. But um, like I said, we'll get into that in just a second. So having a look at Bitcoin, this is exactly the chart that we were looking at yesterday. Uh, the only difference is I added in this sort of triangle region because I realized that there was two potential trends that we could follow. So I sort of made this the, the zone, right? And as you can see right here, though, we've pretty much pulled back up from the uh, support that we had yesterday, which was sort of the top of this triangle right here. So as you can see, we've popped above the critical level of 7,500, but we're just sitting there. We're, I mean, we're literally sitting right on it, okay? So this is good. This is good. We haven't full on plummeted. However, if we were to fall a little bit more, I would see it maybe being a 1% to 2%, you know, pull back down to this region where I would assume that we would be supported by this, uh, you know, this trend right here. But obviously, guys, you know, Bitcoin is a volatile monster. And if we do fall below that, well, then this is sort of the, the critical zone right here, this red zone. And as you can see, it starts at around 7,160 and it ends around the psychological level of $7,000. So, you know, I hate to break it down to just psychological levels, but we're human beings, right? We are attracted to nice round numbers. So I think that we will probably be supported by this, but if we do continue to fall even lower, the $7,000 psychological level could be a big problem if we fall through it. Now, if you know, that isn't the case and we just continue to bounce around, then most likely we could just be doing sideways consolidation, right? And if that's the case, then you could sort of look to do something, um, you know, maybe we come down to here and, uh, you know, sort of bounce back up to here and find our way over, you know, to this, this wedge right here, which would sort of be around uh, June... It would be around June 3rd, okay? But we do know that Bitcoin tends to break out generally before the uh, the wedges. It usually doesn't get to the very end. And also, if I just take away all these indicators right here, 
just like literally just look at the chart with our, with our, just our own eyes, you could sort of see what we were doing. I mean, look, we had this, uh, you know, we had this like, uh, this pump, right? We had this dump. We came up, we did the Bart Simpson dumped again. Now we had the same pump. So this could be a smaller version of this came up, did the exact same Bart Simpson again, and we've dumped back down. Right? So we might just be repeating it uh, all around, you know, I've heard some people uh, calling for a potential inverse head and shoulders. Okay, we're going to keep our eyes on that. But as you guys could see, yesterday, we said that Ethereum was getting very close to the end. And what happened? Well, honestly, I think it was trying to break out. I mean, look, one, two, three times we tried to break out. But as soon as this guy took his dump, well, you guys know what happened. But the good thing that I do want to know about what happened with Ethereum is that it was stomped out at this, uh, you know, $230 level, $231 level. And that was sort of the red zone, as you can see right here. Um, this is the zone that I would consider to be like the danger zone for Ethereum. You can see back here on May 16th, May 17th, and uh, yeah, May 16th and 17th, you know, we kind of touched the bottom right there and we pulled back up. So currently Ethereum, Ethereum's kind of just in that like no man's land territory, but we are sitting very close to the danger zone. Um, now, where would Ethereum uh, start to be bullish again? Well, it would be right around where we had this, where we we're trying to break out around the $256 level. So if we can get back up to $256 and, and sit above that and have that as our next support, then I would be a lot more bullish on Ethereum. Right now, the same thing with Bitcoin, the same thing with Ethereum. We're not really making any moves. We're not really doing anything crazy. So I wouldn't be doing anything crazy. Like as far as trading, I would just wait and see where we're going. Are we going to come lower because that's confirming a bear trend or are we going to, you know, go higher? And if we go above this downward slope that we have right here where we had the, uh, the triple top as we called it, well, then that could be positive. So what are we doing? Long story short, we're watching. We're looking, we're seeing where these markets are going, right? But I want to talk about realistically where Bitcoin can go at the next all-time high. Because let's be honest, it doesn't really matter what happens today, tomorrow, next month, even the next couple months. We know what's happening by next year. We're a year we're, it's a year leading up to the halving event. And after that, you know what happens. You know, the block reward gets cut in half and we've always seen a rally after that. Now we know that history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. So I wanna look at this chart. Shout out to Josh Rager. Thank you so much for putting this to, uh, together. So let's look at the difference. Now, this is Bitcoin rate of return percent. So from cycle bottom to new high. Now we could check out what we've had so far. So in 2011 at the all time high, we had a $31.90 Bitcoin. I know, right? Imagine that was the all-time high. That's crazy. I'd love to have a $31 Bitcoin. And during that cycle, Bitcoin gained uh, 318,864%, okay? So that's this one right here. Now, if we go to the next one, and also I want you to pay attention that it keeps getting longer and longer and longer between each cycle. As you can see right here, it was 245 days from bottom to peak. Then at the next one in 2014, it was 742. And then in the third one, which is the big one that we just had, that was actually over 1,064 days, right? So we are looking at potentially the next one being more than 1,200 plus days. So that's just something to keep in mind. So it gets longer and more spaced out between each bottom to peak, and it also makes slightly less returns. In fact, each market cycle rate of return has been 20% or around one fifth of the previous cycle return from bottom to new peak high, right? So let's look at the second one. Well, now if we go over to 2014, we have a 58,474% return and that was a $1,177 Bitcoin. Now, if we move to the most recent all time high in 2017, um, most people just say 20K. Uh, it looks like they're saying that the number was closer to 19,764, which only makes an 11,900, only an 11,960% return increase. So if we look at this and it, if we look at the fact that it's about one fifth of the previous cycle, then the next all time high should be sometime in 2022. And if we follow this pattern, then it should be around 2,392%, which puts us at, are you ready for it? A $78,500 Bitcoin. 
So $78,500 Bitcoin based on this, if we look at the percentages, if we look at the fact that each return has been 20% uh, you know, of each time and that we are increasing and it's getting less, it's about one fifth, then realistically, we could be looking at a $78,500 Bitcoin. So there you go. That's that. That's very realistic. That's not you know pulling random numbers from from whatever. And you know that's that's not even that's just looking at the charts. That that does that has nothing to do with institutions coming in. Nothing to do with mass adoption. Uh, nothing. That's just the charts. That's just the numbers. Okay. So that there you go. There you go. So there you go. Uh, Seventy eight thousand five hundred dollar Bitcoin. Now I want to talk about something before we get on to the other stuff. But you have worldwide blockchain spending forecasted to reach two point nine billion in twenty. 19. Now, this is from the International Data Corporation. Now, you're probably saying, well, who cares about this? Well, listen, the IDC expects blockchain spending to grow at a robust pace over the 2018 to 2022 forecast period with a five-year compound annual growth rate of around 76% and total spending of around $12.4 billion in 2022. Now, if we're looking at 2022 as being the next all-time high and we're having these guys spending all of this money on blockchain technology, well, this could also have a factor to do with why we may go even higher than that. And I want to turn to this infographic, okay? Now, this came out from Block Data, and this is Forbes Blockchain 50, okay? And if you look at this, you're going to notice you got guys like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Intel, Samsung, SAP, IBM, even guys like JP Morgan, Visa, Fidelity, ING, Alien, State Farm, okay? So what does this all mean? Well, I want to point out number one. The first thing I want to point out is that a company needs at least $1 billion in annual revenue to make this list. So there's probably a lot of companies that we're not even seeing that are getting involved in this space. The other thing I want to point out is the most popular platform is Ethereum which is used by 22 out of the 50 companies, followed by Hyperledger, uh, and then you have Fabric and Corda, which tied with 14 companies each. But also one of the most interesting trends across all 50 of these companies is that nearly all of them are building more than one cryptocurrency which is pretty insane. And the other thing that I want to point out too is just the volume. Now, I know that 95% of the volume is said to be, uh, you know, wash traded and whatever, but a report from Dyer came out recently and they were talking about Bitcoin traded volumes reaching record breaking levels on derivatives exchanges from institutional investors. So they're saying that this could be a new trend, right? This trading on derivatives. In fact, I'm not going to lie. I've actually been doing some trading on uh, Bybit uh, a little bit, trying to warm up to this whole shorting and longing thing you guys know. Um, I am actually going to come out with a tutorial if you guys want. I know it's it's pretty scary trading those uh, derivatives. But anyway, check this out. The CME, the Chicago-based derivatives option and future exchange, reached an all-time high in trading volume two months in a row for the month of May. It has already reached nearly $7 billion in trading volume. So check that out right there. I mean, you can see this is absolutely blowing away anything we had. I mean, back in 2018, in July, we had $4.2 billion. We had $4.2 Eight eight in April and six point six billion in May. We also have Deribit. They're another um, you know exchange as well. Futures exchange. Look at this and look at the weekend trading. The weekend trading even has increased, which is crazy. Usually the weekends you don't see a lot of volume, right? And then obviously we have our good old buddy Bitmex, which they're saying has absolutely shattered previous volume records as it recorded seven point eight billion this far in the month of May. And it's not just these exchanges alone. You also have CZ. This came out uh, literally just like 13 hours ago or so. And he says, we are seeing much higher order volumes, number of orders than December 2017 at the peak. Trade, not order volume in USD is one third of the peak, but Bitcoin price is one third and ETH price is only one fifth of the last peak. Most other main alt prices are even lower. Now you do have somebody joking down here saying, slow your bots down and it should fix it. (laughs) Haha, <laughs> okay. But still, that being said, that is something to point out. And it's not just the volume, and it's not just these companies coming in and looking to enhance their blockchain divisions, right? Let's just go over to, uh, this is the App Store. This is the App Store Live. I'll refresh it. This isn't a picture. I'm actually on the App Store, okay? I just want to point something out. Now, if you could see right here, I'm in finance. So I want to just point out, here is Coinbase right here, okay? 
You can see it down here, Coinbase buy and sell Bitcoin. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's on the front page. It's not exactly at the top, but let me show you something that I think is even more bullish, okay? If we go right up to here, we have Venmo, number one, PayPal, number two, and Cash App, number three. Well, let's check out Cash App. If you guys aren't familiar, would you look at that? Send, spend cash, buy Bitcoin. And this is the number, actually, this is number one in finance. Whoa, guys, this is number one in finance. This was not number one when I was gonna start this video. Holy crap, so the number one app in finance right now is Cash App where you can send, spend cash, and buy Bitcoin. Come on, is this not showing you where the interest is lying right now, guys? Got a little excited over that. Number one in finance, yo, smash the likes for that, guys. Oh, that just made, my, that just made me really happy. Think about how many people are gonna get exposed to that. So, if you thought the 2017 bull run was intense, just wait until this time next year when the infrastructure is more robust than ever, the block reward falls to 6.25 BTC, and geopolitical tensions are high as we head into the U.S. election, going to be downright awe-inspiring. I agree with you, Marty Bent. I agree with you. So that's the situation. That's what's going on. I can't believe Cash App is number one in finance. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, guys, I mean, we may have some some sell-offs. You know, Bitcoin could go down to 6,400 again. But guys, long term, man, are we bullish on this space. It is going to be some very, very, very bright skies ahead. But not if you're busy getting scammed by scammers, which brings me to this, which is why I need to bring this up. Now, guys, if you just simply do a Google search of ETH giveaway scam, okay, you will notice that all of these will pop up. These are the infamous Ethereum scams. If you guys were around on Twitter, everyone was saying, hey, you know, send me 0.1 ETH and I'll send you back 10, right? Here's an example from Elon Musk, right? Oh, but now check, this is actually Elon Musk with an A, okay? Hi guys, I'm donating 250 Ethereum to the ETH community. First, shouldn't it be 250 ETH to the Ethereum community? Anyway, first 250 transactions with 0.2 ETH sent to the address below will receive one ETH in the address, blah, 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 right? So what would people do? Well, they would send ETH, right, to this address in hopes that they were gonna get like 5X back, and they never did. They never got their Ethereum, right? Why? Why is this the case? Well, first of all, why would you have to send, you don't have to, why would you have to send somebody Ethereum just to have them send some back to you? That's ridiculous. If I wanted to give something away, I would just give it away. So number one rule you need to know right now, if anyone is ever telling you to send them cryptocurrency in order to receive some cryptocurrency back, don't do it. I don't care who it is, don't do it. You can see over here, look, even uh, John McAfee, uh, same thing. Uh, Pre-draw happens right now. I'm giving away 5,000 ETH to identify your address. Just send whatever ETH to the address below and get 5 to 20 ETH back. Once again, you can see this says Echo Carters, but they use the same uh, you know image and um, name, but obviously their handle can't be official McAfee because it's already taken. So that is something I want you to just keep your eyes out on. So this brings me to this scam, which unfortunately was on an ad in front of my video, which is why I'm very pissed off about this and I'm bringing it up. So I want to give a shout out to Digital Com by uh, uh, Digital Commodity Investor. Thank you for pointing this out. He, he noticed this on yesterday's video. So this is the video right here. This is the dude. It's, and he's not doing it with ETH this time. They're doing it with XRP, right? And this is the big XRP giveaway, Ripple's mass adoption competition. Now, I want to play this and watch this live and you can just see how ridiculous this is we're gonna watch this and then we're gonna take some action on it okay hello all my friends you know I've been promoting XRP for a long time and it's something I really love and if you want to be one of the first to learn about big news in the crypto world then I have something amazing here for you right now this is incredible stuff right now I'm gonna participate in this amazing also, first of all, why is he reading from a script? I mean, if you're doing an XRP giveaway, do you need to read from a script? You know, if all you gotta do is send, I don't know. It's just that right there is kind of weird. Organized by the Ripple company. Organized by, by the, the Ripple company. crypto exchanges no. around. This is to help people's loyalty to XRP and to help increase mass adoption. Well, my friends, let's look, catch on, and see how easily I participate in this chick giveaway. I'm turning on the demo screen. Chick giveaway? Isn't it supposed well, to be chic? We can see here it's written 
to verify your payment address, just send from 1,000 to 10,000 XRP to the address below and get from 10,000 to 100,000 XRP back. Well, how do you like that? I love That's it. Amazing, I'm going to send it? everything. Please enter the destination tag 154907. This guy seems so All confident, right. by the way. I decide on to pay in full. 10,000 XRP. My friends, well, hold on. Let's copy the payment address and paste it into the wallet. I'm entering the destination tag. Then I'm entering the amount. 10,000. Confirm payment. Yes. Payment confirmed. My friends, this really is the bomb. Payment confirmed. I just sent all my money away to a scammer. The tradition have tested this giveaway and have taken their cash. And many popular bloggers are talking about this video on Twitter and tweeting it. They even share this video. So if you're ready to take a step towards your luck, to your future, participate in this while you still have the opportunity. Hurry up. Okay, there was enough time. Now let's look at my wallet. All right, guys. So I'm not going to go into this anymore. Um... You know, I, this is obviously, I mean, look at these comments down here. First of all, th these are totally fake botted comments. Look at this. Great things happen here. Just watch the video. Earn money. Do you like crypto? Take part in the giveaway. That's true. Received 66,900 XRP. Explosive video. Sent 3,000 XRP. And this thing, um, this thing came out three months ago. So my question is, why the hell is this still showing up? And how has nobody reported this yet? So I'm going to take the opportunity right now to go over here, click on this. I'm going to report this. I think you guys should do the same. Spam or misleading, okay? Choose one. It is a scam or a fraud. Next. And then we need to say why this is a scam or a fraud. <clears throat> and, um, I guess you could change the timestamp here. Probably go a little earlier. I think it was like around a minute 30 he was talking about this stuff. And I'm just going to like say, this is a scam. You send your currency to an address and never receive anything in return as the video states. Classic scam. Please remove this video. And I, I think that you guys should also go over here and write something, uh, receive anything. I just, sorry, I typed that wrong. So yeah, report that, okay? So this has been reported, that's it. This stuff needs to end. And I definitely just wanted to just use an opportunity, a real life opportunity to show you these things that happen. So if anyone, even I say it, because I have a bunch of fake uh, scammer accounts that look just like me on YouTube. Okay, one of them is Crypto Zombie Tips at gmail.com. The only time you should ever listen to anything I ever say is if it's actually in this video itself. That is it. I will never ask you to send money or do anything like that in the comments below. You can always hit me up on my official Telegram, okay, which is right here, or you can hit me up in my email. That's it. Don't even trust the comments because you don't even know if that's actually me in the comments or not. Sometimes it's not, okay? So I just wanted to point that out before we move on. Also, speaking of the fact that this is an ad that's been playing in front of my video, I just wanted to point out that I do realize that ads can be boring, so I just figured I'd take an opportunity to let you know that you don't have to watch the ads if you use the Brave browser. I am a verified publisher, and you know if you use my link below, you do get $5 in basic attention tokens to use on the platform. But also, yeah, I can't believe that they're letting things like this actually play in front of crypto videos. And I hope that uh, YouTube can clean this up because in one hand, I take this as a positive sign, right? That, um, you know, the scammers are, the scammers are back again. So that means, uh, you know, that obviously people are interested in the space again, but at the same time, this is going to potentially burn people and hurt people. And I don't want this negative connotation again, associated with the space where then we have Google and Facebook pulling crypto ads again and then we just start this thing all over again, okay? So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Also, what are the odds? Look at the recommended video, Hacking BitConnect. I literally just talked about this on my Twitter. I said, if anyone new to the space is even considering investing in BitConnect 2.0, do yourself a favor and watch this first. If you're still not convinced, well then, I guess that's just Darwinism, Darwinism at its finest. So yeah, don't invest in BitConnect 2.0. I mean, I just, whatever, do what you want. I'm telling, I'm telling you financial advice, don't do it, okay? But do whatever you want, okay? Now, 
Talking about some good news, some coin news. So why was Seller up? The, uh, Seller and Matic were up. Matic was up a lot more than Seller today. Well, they've actually announced a partnership. Now, guys, this is groundbreaking. This is the first I have ever seen two layer two scaling solutions actually partnering with each other. Actually, when I first saw this news, I was a little bit confused. I didn't even understand how this was going to work considering sellers using state channels and Matic is dealing with proof of stake plasma side chains. But if you come down here, this sort of summarizes it right here. So it says for a state channel network, integration with Matic means that the cost and delay of initialization, final settlement and protocol failure protection can be significantly reduced and therefore remove some key user experience friction. So for a side chain integration with seller networks, generally generalized state channel technology means that high frequency real-time interaction between users becomes possible with zero cost and cross side chain and side chain to root chain instant fund transfer and smart contract integration also become possible so the side chain users can move assets freely without any cross chain delay okay so there you go yeah, there you go. So it makes a smooth blockchain experience and obviously significantly reduces the cost. So that is a, this is a crazy partnership, man. I'm really, really impressed with what Matic has been up to. Also, we have Binance Chain and Phantom. What's going on here? Well, they say, dear fan. Phantomians and Binance community members, we are incredibly excited to share that Binance Chain and Phantom will be working together to improve interoperability within the blockchain ecosystem for the betterment of the industry and to connect loosely tied industry players into a cohesive digital economy. Through the creation of a multi-asset and cross-chain ecosystem, we'll be supporting a multitude of tokens, including the ERC-20 standard, our native Phantom token, and the BEP2 token standard coin on Binance chain. Now, if you'll notice, Phantom is one of the projects that's up today during a red day. And I really think this is because let's be real, they're probably getting listed on Binance. I mean, obviously if this, if this is the news that's coming out, well, the next thing to be expected is a Binance listing. Currently you see, if we go over to markets, they are not on Binance. Their biggest exchange is KuCoin. So I would assume that there's a lot of anticipation that Phantom is going to get listed on Binance. So basically just wanted to throw that out to you guys as well. Also, just a follow-up, just because we've got to make one quick follow-up, the U.S. Copyright Office says that it does not recognize Craig Wright as Satoshi. So we obviously had an article that came out, right? And they needed to clarify this point because on Tuesday, there was a press representative that sent a release, okay, that went around. And you can see right here, it said, uh, the registration issued by the U.S. Copyright Office recognized Wright as the author under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto of both the white paper and code. This is the first government agency recognition of Craig Wright as Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. Well, the Copyright Office actually wrote in the press release, in a case in which a work is registered under a pseudonym, the Copyright Office does not investigate whether there is a provable connection between the claimant and the pseudonym, pseudonymous, I can't say it, author. So as multiple sources have, have already noted, all it takes to register a copyright is $55 and a stable internet connection, okay? So just, just, just to put the nail in the coffin here, and then I'm done. I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I, I just don't care, but I just wanted to just finalize this story. Basically, it's and look, it's open source, okay? Bitcoin is open source. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym. Literally anyone can file for this. It could have been me. It could have been you. $55 and an internet connection, and you too can also be Satoshi Nakamoto, okay? So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Before we move on, because this is just ridiculous, and I, I I can't believe the Bitcoin SV surge. You know, sometimes I think to myself, every time this dude Craig Wright does something, like that massive November sell-off that we had, that was right around the time we were having the Bitcoin cash fork off in the Bitcoin SV debacle. Seems like every time this guy opens his mouth, makes a move, does something, madness happens to the space. And of course today, you know, we're looking at this. So, I mean, is this Craig's fault again? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I'll, I'll blame him. It's, it's probably not. But yeah, anyway, moving on. That's enough. Let's talk about one piece of good news. Switzerland's six stock exchange is working on a Swiss franc stablecoin. A spokesman for six confirmed the move in an email telling Coindesk, yes, we are currently working on a CHF stablecoin. So Swiss franc. So there you go. That's good news. Also, and I just was thinking about this real quick. As far as copywriting things, I mean, there's people that actually have translated the Bible. Like they'll just translate it and, and, and do something and then copyright it, okay? 
So there's people now that nowadays that are copywriting the Bible, okay? So just to kind of put that into perspective for you guys. So that being said, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who's been coming back to the channel. You guys rock. Uh, really appreciate it. If you haven't got subscribed, definitely do that. Also turn on the bell notification if you want to get these video updates immediately. Sometimes they do have sensitive content that is time sensitive, so you might want to get it. Um, and that's really it for today, guys. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you guys do want to support, you know, you can use any of my referral links below. You can go pick up um you can go pick up a Ledger Nano uh, S or X. Um, I'm also gonna put my Bybit link, uh, uh, referral link below, even though I haven't put the review out yet. I'm gonna do that actually later tonight. Um, but that's it for me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You know I freaking love you guys. You're the reason that I do this every single day. Don't get scammed, be safe, don't freak out. You know we're going to the moon. Short term, we could have some rocky times. Um, obviously, we were looking at um, so I think the fact that my camera's battery just died right now is telling me that's enough. This video's gone on for way too long. But like I was trying to say real quick, we are above this $7,590 level, which is good if we maintain above this. This is a good thing. Um, we may potentially fall down somewhere around $7,300 if we maintain this upward trend, okay? But currently, we're, we are still in this wedge. And you guys know we've talked about this. Not going to talk about it anymore. That's it for today. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You're freaking awesome. My name is Kate. Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.